Thank you for joining me, Notre Dame faithful fan, the Notre Dame faithful fans. Today, I am discussing Notre Dame offensive recruiting in this 2022 cycle, and I made a mock class. I haven't done this quite yet. I've done the target boards, the specific positional recruiting videos, um, but today I wanted to put my spin on a mock draft or a mock class. Um, I have one quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, and five offense linemen but i do think that number could be four really depends on a few guys but i made this pretty realistic there were a few guys that i would swap in and i'll talk about that um but here we go at quarterback the obvious steve angeli i highly doubt they take a second quarterback some people are more optimistic that they do i'm really not taking ron paulus last year um pretty much solidified they will be taking one at least in my opinion I don't like that they took Ron Foss last year. It's a pet peeve of mine. I really think you should have just taken Buckner last year and then went after and Jelly and maybe went after Wimsat really hard. Um, try to convince him to be the second quarterback or really go after some smaller guy um, that is at least better than Ron Paulus. At the running back position, I included Hayden. I also had him on the thumbnail. This could really be Singleton. Uh, Sodchuk is not as likely anymore. Right now, though, my gut says Hayden, but um, Hayden could very well go to Ohio State, even Tennessee, but I think it's Ohio State and Notre Dame at this point. Jadarian Price is a guy that that I like a lot. Uh, Coach Hayes, he's a YouTuber, love his stuff. He did a, a video talking about Jadarian Price, outlined him really well. He's a speed guy. I'm definitely glad he's the number two back. I would, I would take... Dallin Hayden or Nicholas Singleton in a heartbeat over him. That's no shame to Price. He's a great player, really humble kid, but I don't know. I just think Hayden and Singleton are better. Right now, I think it's 50-50 whether they take whether they get, I should say, Hayden or Singleton. They're going to be hard. I could really see Hayden and Singleton splitting between Notre Dame and Ohio State. Singleton also is gaining some high uh, high interest from Wisconsin and Penn State. And then Hayden, it's pretty much like I just said, Ohio State, Notre Dame. But that's the running back. Hayden and Singleton pretty much interchangeable at this point. Visits will play a huge factor in their recruitments. Wide receiver. Um, this might not excite some people, but it excites me. Amorion Walker is a guy that we don't really know what we're going to get. This senior year will be huge. This camp season will be huge. But I like Amorion Walker. Um, we head to to the second and third wide receivers. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking Merriweather and I'm taking Bradshaw. Now, Merriweather, I'd call this an Oregon, Stanford, Notre Dame fight right now. Washington State actually has a little bit of traction, but I'm, I'm confident Notre Dame can land him. A commenter from a few videos ago said they're confident. I am confident as well. Savion Bradshaw, now I wanted to put Morris in here. Tyler Morris, the wide receiver from uh, from Naz Academy just outside of Chicago. I decided to take Bradshaw, though. Morris, um, I think Michigan leads there. I don't know by how much, but I think they lead. Um, so I took Bradshaw because I think Dell Alexander and company really like him. Maris, Merriweather is an automatic take. I don't know if Bradshaw would be, um, but I also would like to point out I do not think they will end up offering Omar Cooper and Reggie Florima, which is a little disheartening, but rankings don't mean anything to them. They have their own guys, and speed is what we're wanting. Zavon Bradshaw is possesses a ton of speed. We head to the tight, ends, the tight end position. I put three guys. I'll say this. If they take five offensive linemen, I doubt they take three tight ends, vice versa, um, just for numbers-wise. They could even take two wide receivers. Who knows? Who knows? Um, but Holden Stays is a guy I really like in this class. Some people are throwing around he's a silent. I actually think he is. That's just my opinion, but I do think he is a silent commitment at this point. I think once he gets up to South Bend in the coming weeks or months, that will solidify uh, his commitment and it'll make it public. I'm not trying. I don't know anything. I'm not. I haven't talked to him personally or have any of those sources. But I'm con- from what I see on social media and whatnot. I'm confident in saying that Eli Raridon is a guy that is in the middle of his basketball season. Whether that helps him or not, I don't know. Um, I think if he were to not be playing basketball right now, he would have got- already been in South Bend on a visit, check things out, um, and therefore committed. He actually was born in South Bend, grew up in South Bend. Um, his dad had him while he was at college. 
Um, and he was an offensive tackle for Notre Dame. I for, his name is escaping me right now, though. And then Jack Nickel is locked in with Notre Dame. I saw some rumors saying, "Ah, oh, Nickel, we're going to kick him out. We'd rather have Red on and stays. In my humble opinion, I think Red on and stays are the two best tight ends out of these three. But Nickel is a great player, and I do think he has a spot in this class when push comes to shove. And I'm not mad that he's in this class for any any reason. Um, all three of these guys are great. My rankings personally stays as one right on as two Nicholas three. And then on the offensive line, we got Trouth, Chan, Hinsman, Tenona, and Wagner. So Chan and Tenona are the only two currently committed. And then you got guys like Wagner, who I'd call that an Ohio State Notre Dame clash right now. I think Ohio State has the lead. And according to some Ohio State source, I believe he will be in Columbus in early June for Buckeye Bash, um, which is where a bunch of Ohio State commits and, and top targets will will be in Columbus checking things out. That's definitely not good for Notre Dame and Wagner. Grew up an Ohio State fan. is in a very pro Ohio State area there in, uh, in, in Ohio, but we'll see what happens. He definitely values academics. He, he has Duke and Stanford on his list. Carson Hensman is a guy that is not talked about nearly enough. I talk about him a ton here, but um, but I think he could end up in this class 100%. Been to campus, I believe, twice. Um, parents are very pro Notre Dame. Uh, it's gotten a lot better. I believe he's in the middle of a basketball season too, just like Raradon, but big fan of his game. Alabama, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Notre Dame. He said he will be dropping the top five soon, so be on the lookout for that. I'd put Wisconsin, Alabama, and Notre Dame in there as locks, and then we'll see about the other schools. But I think it comes down to Alabama, Notre Dame, and Wisconsin. And right now, I'd say Wisconsin is a slight, slight favorite, but that could very well change um, from a visit or two. And then Billy Scrouth is a guy that's pretty much been locked into this class for a while, even though he's not committed. I don't think he's a silent for anyone wondering that um, in the comment section or anything. I think he's an uncommitted guy hearing things out from a bunch of schools. I think his top two are Wisconsin and Notre Dame. But where things stand right now, I'm confident he ends up in this class. Now, these are just five guys. There are a lot of other guys. Grant Bingham is one from Kentucky. Um, Joe Bruner is another Wisconsin guy that is high on Notre Dame. I think they're trailing Wisconsin there. Um, and his recruitment, Grant Bingham, I think if Notre Dame pushes, they'll 100% land him. That's just my opinion. George Fitzpatrick from uh, from Colorado is a guy to know about. Jake Taylor from Nevada. That's looking more Oklahoma now, but Notre Dame stays heavily uh, remained in his or heavily interested in him and his services. So a bunch of guys that could fill these spots. Um, I also made this list about two weeks ago. Nothing has really changed in my mind other than maybe I would switch out Emil Wagner for a guy like Billy Scr- or not Billy Scroth, um, Jake Taylor. Or uh, Grant Bingham, or even even Joe Bruner. I haven't thrown his name around enough, and Notre Dame is still in in a lot of contact with him, and he is still very interested in Notre Dame. It's vice versa there. I'll be back with the defensive line, linebackers, corners, and safeties probably tomorrow. Um, but yeah, short little video. I'll go through it very quickly. If you did not see live viewers, um, so we have five, eight, eleven. 13, 14 on the offensive side of the ball. I think they're going to end up taking somewhere from 12 to 14. I definitely don't think they're taking more than 14, but I would expect it somewhere in the 12, 13, or 14 range at this point. You got one quarterback, two running backs. These are all pretty much solid. Could they take two wide receivers? Could they take three? I think that's more to three. You look at the tight ends, could be two or three. Nobody's really sure other than John McNulty and Brian Kelly and Tommy Reese. And then offensive line could very well be four. Um, it just depends how many guys Marcus Freeman lands on the defensive side of the ball, which seems to be moving a lot faster. Um, but defensively, I'll have a bunch of guys in there. Some might might shock you. Um, I, I've been really pro Kamara Rogers in Notre Dame. I don't know if that's just my hopes getting the best of me. I was like that with Sierra Wright. I'm all over Notre Dame and cornerback recruiting. That's probably my favorite uh, position to talk about. Just because you see Bama, you see Ohio State, you see Clemson, their corners are just just top tier. And Notre Dame has never had that. Notre Dame has had the occasional quarterback. It's been a little while. Running back, they're very solid. 
wide receiver, they've had some really good guys. Offensive line, of course. Tight end, of course. Defensive line, I love what Mike Gelson does there. Linebackers, Clark Lee did a fabulous job, um, and they're continuing to stack up there. I love Prince Colley. I think he's the gem of this 2021 class. And then safeties and corners are, are the main positional need, I think, for Notre Dame. You need speed at wide receiver, but you need speed at corner, and you need to lock up those beat guys because – even with D, even with Clemson's backup quarterback, they were just blowing past Notre Dame's corners. So yeah, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe. Comment. I respond to every single comment if it's reasonable. And that's.